Welcome. I am David Anderson, the bridge pastor at Sylvania United Church of Christ, and I welcome you to this online service. Just a couple notes about the service. It begins with a prelude uh, performed by Sally Mossing, and then the different sections of the worship service are in separate videos. But all you need to do is uh, touch each link as the previous one is concluded. And you can find the program for this on our website. But I welcome you to this service of Sylvania United Church of Christ. Uh, the kind of the order that we are following today is that we will have the prelude, uh, the scripture and prayer, which will take place in this segment. Then there is a special recording of Weavings, a hymn that has been our theme throughout Lent. And on Easter Sunday, we asked our members to record themselves at home in isolation. This has been put together by Chris, Kristen Leverton, and you can follow that music and the slides that were sent in uh, after you've heard the prayer and the scripture lesson. Following that is the sermon, and then finally a postlude. And the postlude this morning was selected by Lori Bitts, who every day sends out a daily devotion, a daily musical devotion. And she will begin to also provide us with a postlude on, on Sunday mornings. The other opportunity for worship at Sylvania United Church of Christ is the Taizé services, which we offer online and which are released at least once a month on Thursdays. And I hope that you will be able to uh, see one of those. In this segment, I'd like to read a poem uh, entitled Lockdown by Brother Richard. And as you listen to it, I hope that you will hear it as a a prayer of gratitude, a prayer of aspiration, and uh, we will conclude the reading of this poem with the uh, recitation of, of the Lord's Prayer. And as I say the Lord's Prayer, I invite you in your home to also uh, be a part of that. But here now, this poem, which was sent to me by one of my uh, one of our church members at Sylvania United Church of Christ. It is entitled Lockdown by Brother Richard. Yes, there is fear. Yes, there is isolation. Yes, there is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, there is even death. But they say that in Wuhan, after so many years of noise, you can hear the birds again. They say that after just a few weeks of quiet, the sky is no longer thick with fumes, but blue and gray and clear. They say that in the streets of Assisi, people are singing to each other across the empty squares, keeping their windows open so that those who are alone may hear the sounds of family around them. They say that a hotel in west of Ireland is offering free meals and delivery to the housebound. Today, a young woman I know is busy spreading flyers with her number through the neighborhood so that the elders may have someone to call on. Today, churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples are preparing to welcome and shelter the homeless, the sick, the weary, all over the world, people are slowing down and reflecting. All over the world, people are looking at their neighbors in a new way. All over the world, people are waking up to a new reality, to how big we really are, to how little control we really have, to what really matters, to love. So we pray and we remember that yes, there is fear, but there does not have to be hate. Yes, there is isolation, but there does not have to be loneliness. Yes, there is panic buying, but there does not have to be meanness. Yes, there is sickness, 
but there does not have to be disease of the soul. Yes, there is even death, but there can also be a rebirth of love. Wake to the choices you make as to how to live now, today, breathe, Listen behind the factory noises of your panic. The birds are singing again. The sky is clearing. Spring is coming. And we are always encompassed by love. Open the windows of your soul. And though you may not be able to touch across the empty square, sing. Now, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now may we listen to the scripture lesson for this morning, taken from the gospel according to St. John chapter 11, verses 32 through 44. This is a continuation of the story of the raising of Lazarus. Jesus, who has been away from Bethany, now returns four days after the death of Lazarus, and the story takes up from that point at verse 32. Hear now these words of scripture. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, unbind him and let him go. May God's blessing be added to these words of scripture. Amen. 